I kept saying to the staff, the future for our business is North America and it is through innovation and new products. It's not about the past, it's about what we can do in the big markets of the world. The reality was that the organisation was strategically vulnerable. Um, we were predominantly an Australian-based um, business at that time. We had to get smarter, we had to get better, we had to get bigger. Shortly after privatisation, CSL acquires a cell culture business based in Kansas City, and later an animal health business in Nebraska. These relatively modest transactions enable the team to learn the challenges of international acquisitions. Meanwhile, early success of the Broadmeadows facility inspires a daring plan with game-changing rewards. Peter Turner and many of the fine engineers there developed a lot of novel processes that we could almost lead the world in modern fractionation. So for the first time, we had a card to play. ZLB, one of the largest producers of plasma products in the world, is being sold by the Swiss Red Cross. The American Red Cross invites CSL to enter a joint bid. At the 11th hour, the Americans withdraw. But CSL holds its nerve and proceeds alone, joining a three-way bidding process. Novartis was well known, Asclea was a local company, and there was CSL. Nobody knew them. In that process, it became known that uh, the CEO of CSL, Brian McNamee, he was seriously sick, but he was so determined that he jumped in a plane, came to Bern, he convinced the Swiss Red Cross to sell to CSL. And I think that was something that people still today talk about, this determination. A small, technically strong Australian company could persuade the Swiss Red Cross that we would be a fine custodian of this very important asset, a business that was much bigger than us in plasma fractionation. That was the moment that really transformed CSL. Through ZLB Bioplasma AG, our wholly owned subsidiary based at Bern in Switzerland, we produce intravenous immunoglobulin for the USA, the world's largest market for plasma products. To secure supply of plasma to this growing manufacturing network, CSL needs a donor collection solution. If we wanted to grow in the global market, it was realized we need our own raw material supply. And so that was the time when we acquired the NABI centers. The deal is sealed in June of 2001. And three months later, the integration begins. They brought all of the employees together for a meeting here in South Florida, including the managers from the plasma centers that were a part of the NABI group and we just kicked off the meeting at 9 a.m. When all of a sudden cell phones began ringing all across the room. It was a real opportunity for us to see how CSL was going to treat us as people and employees. They made sure that people were taken care of, were able to communicate with their families back home and really took care of us on a human level um, on that first day. As a publicly listed company, the market offers a regular scorecard for CSL's performance. The purchase of NABI is warmly received and the share price soars. But a glut in global plasma supply soon delivers a harsh reality check. CSL down 12% to $17.87 following a profit downgrade because of lower prices for its products. The shares are now a third of what they were at the start of the year. The battered share price leaves the company vulnerable to being bought and split up. But CSL's typically bold response is to expand. Aventus Bearing is a major player in the global plasma industry, with manufacturing sites that include the Kankakee facility, previously operated by Armour, and the Marburg facility founded as Bearing Worker. CSL launches an audacious acquisition bid and wins. 
CSL to us was an unknown entity. We were used to the, the major players within the, the plasma industry, um, but we'd never really heard of CSL. I think the board had a lot of courage in buying another large business, three times bigger than what we were, doubling their bets effectively. Both companies were struggling at that time. It was really a, a combination of, you know, this has to work for that part of the industry to survive. With Aventus Bearing failing to generate positive cash flow, tough decisions have to be made. Then they start downsizing. I thought, okay, they're trying to get rid of the company total. That was my first reaction. It was either do that or shut some of the operations. In Kankakee, there may be no choice in the matter, with an FDA consent decree likely to shut the entire operation. These are issued after repeated violations of good manufacturing practice and force companies to change the way they operate. Most fail to do so. Kankakee facility is a significant employer and contributor to the Kankakee area. So the thought of having a consent decree reduce or eliminate the business there was critical. CSL sets about overhauling their entire supply chain. Local strengths are harnessed to make each facility not only sustainable, but a center of excellence in CSL's global network. Efficiencies are driven through innovation in plasma collection, production, and logistics, while the most is made of existing products. This re-engineering not only rescues the Kankakee facility, it transforms the economics of the entire sector. CSL The Follower has become the pioneering industry leader. Right from the day we took over, things started to turn up. And that was incredible to live through. It was the most focused group of individuals I ever met in terms of making sure that this business was successful. To be quite honest with you, no, I did not think we would get out of a consent degree. In fact, if you ever look around, I believe this is only maybe the second company that has ever got out of one. And I keep telling my employees, I said, you don't want to go back. With both the Kankakee and Marburg facilities thriving, many of the laid off workers return. The sites that were dramatically affected are now two or three times what they were when we first uh, went there and, and took over the business. During this period, CSL remains committed to a focused strategy, being willing to divest quality assets in service of the bigger vision. Another critical success factor is the understanding that acquiring a company and integrating their culture are two very different things. This transition phase of uh, changing ownership through the Australian was very difficult for us, for the employees. Made mistakes, you know, things went wrong. Um, we learned a lot about cultural differences. So many of us left. There was a lot of anxiety. Do they really understand who we are and what we're all about? What does transcend cultural difference is a shared devotion to patience and dedication to science. The teams bind through respectful collaboration, utilizing one another's strengths to create something new together. As you really have teams that work together, uh, on special projects, you know, you grow together. When CSL acquires Melbourne-based Zenith Therapeutics, that team is partnered with Marburg to develop recombinant coagulation factors. The recombinant programs are particularly important for Marburg. The original discovery research was done here, but um, without the collaboration uh, with the CSL group, we would still stuck there. So it was very important that we got them involved and so we could really start the development of these products. Well, one of the strongest performances in the recent reporting season was the global plasma and vaccine business, CSL. Now, having bedded down the $100 million acquisition of the Melbourne-based biotech business Zenith late last year and with royalties from its blockbuster cervical cancer vaccine Gardasil starting to flow in, the company looks to be moving away from its reliance on the commodity of plasma, which accounts for about 90% of the business still. While the focus has been on the great expansion of the plasma business, CSL has been left behind in the flu space with its rivals developing technologies that threaten to make its products obsolete. 
Recalling the fate of its polio vaccine, insulin and penicillin, CSL faces a tough choice. Invest heavily or exit the game. And I think it'll be fair to say that we either uh, neglected or perhaps didn't put the right amount of attention onto the influenza business through that, through that time period. Mexico, meanwhile, is burying its dead and the United States has been told it may have to do the same. As the outbreak spreads across the Americas, the White House has asked Congress for $2 billion to fight the disease. While CSL is considering its future in the flu industry, the US government and Novartis open a cutting-edge influenza vaccine facility in Holly Springs to ensure pandemic preparedness for America. With characteristic shrewdness, CSL acquire Novartis's flu business, including the Holly Springs site and a major production facility in Liverpool, England. We hold a number of pandemic contracts with the UK, with Sweden and with Switzerland as well. The investment also buys some exciting science, such as an adjuvanted vaccine and cell culture technology, the first major evolution in vaccine production since the introduction of chicken eggs in the 1930s. The integrated business is the world's second largest flu vaccine provider, rebranded as Securus. We're well placed to ultimately uh, being the CSL approach to, to that business to ultimately take it to global leadership. The Novartis flu business acquisition provides a poetic bookend to the last 25 years of global expansion, and indeed, the entire centenary story. The CSL that confronted Spanish flu on behalf of an infant nation now extends pandemic protection through North America, Europe, and the Asia Pacific. And the 20 people in a small government department has grown to a workforce of over 16,000 staff with a presence in more than 30 countries. For all of us who sat around the original executive table in the early 1990s, we could not have dreamed where CSO would be today. We, we never set out to create this giant of a company that we have today. That was never the objective. The objective was to give the organisation a future, not a past, and to think about the patients and how we could match great science to the patients. As CSL approaches its centenary, the president of the plasma business, Paul Perot, takes over from Brian McNamee as CEO of the entire CSL group. If you're going up the mountain and you're going up the curve, at some point, if you reach the top, the only way to go is down. And so you constantly have to reinvent yourself. You have to come back down the mountain a little bit and say, OK, I think we're here. How can we you know, reinvent and come back again and grow? The share market is perhaps the least sentimental judge of CSL's performance. But more emotionally invested are the staff members who each received a gift of shares when the company listed in 1994. Well, when our marriage split up, I had to get a job. I had two boys to bring up. So I had to clean the canteen, the theatre, the toilets. Oh, yeah, we had some fun. I checked the shares fairly often, at least a couple of times a week. I always thought when it got to $50, I'd sell, but I didn't. And then when it got to $100, I thought, I'll sell. I'm keeping the shares, well, in case I really need something, but I'd like to have something to give me family when I'm gone. With dividend reinvestment, $1,000 invested in 1994 is worth over $200,000 today. Well, I often say to me, oh, when the old girl goes, you know, we'll be right. But they mightn't be right. I'm going to live for a lot longer. There mightn't be any shares left. 